Practice the era of Shin Ayin Tess. Shiva to Ferris Chaim. The Ezra Hashem Yisparach. We find throughout these parshas the Iker, the Askalas, the Geula, going through the Gulas Eretz, the Gulas Mitzrayim. And there are a few things I want to tell on this parsha, which will bring us out hopefully to a very stark uh, chizik. So the first pasuk in the parsha, we daver like a Moshe, and Yemer love Ani Hashem, I am Hashem. The era El Avram El Yitzchak El Yaakov Bekel Shakai Ushmi Hashem Lo Inadati Lehem. I appeared myself, I showed myself to Avram Yitzchak Yaakov Bekel Shakai, but my name Hashem Yirkei Vavke, I didn't show it to them. So first of all, what does that mean? That I showed Avram Yitzchak Yaakov Kel Shakai, and I didn't show them Nuke Vavke. What does that mean that he first started off as Elikim as Kel Shakai, and then he showed? I'm going to show you now Nuke Vavke. What does that mean exactly? What is the difference between Elikim and Nuke Vavke? Second of all, we find in the, in the later on of the parsha. So Hashem told Moshe Aaron to go to the palace of Paroi to go tell Paroi. Let out call Yisrael from this land of Egypt, this forsaken land. So the Shiva said a bar about why Aaron had to do the Isis and not Moshe. Aaron was the one who threw the staff on the ground to make the snake, and not Moshe, because Moshe, he said in this week's bar, had a curse of to Pare. And it's not right that he should start off the Makkas in the palace where he grew up. Okay, of course he brought the later ones, but he started off to be the one who brings it in the palace where he grew up. That's not, that's not right, Alta Karaz is you know he's going to bring it later, and the other Makas came into the palace. That's why they came in and everything else came in, but they started off to be the one to bring in the snake. So we find here this, this Misa that Hashem told Aaron, told Moshe Aaron, bring this, this uh, sign to Parai. It says like this, V'yovei Moshev Aaron al Parai, V'yaz kein, Kashir Tziv Hashem, V'yashlech Aaron is Mateo, V'yaz Parai, V'yaz Parai, Aaron took his staff, he threw it down on the floor. Vayihi lesanin. It became a sanin. Anybody know what sanin means? Alligator. Sanin means a serpent. Rashi says nachash, but it, sanin. The regular translation of sanin is a, sea, a serpent, a sea monster, the Loch Ness monster, right? Loch Ness is a lake in Ireland somewhere, and we all know Scotland. Scotland, Scotland. Sorry, Scotland. And there's a big monster over there, and you can see in the pictures, like a big thing like that. That is a sanin. So he threw it on the floor, became a sanin. So what's the shot? It had to become a sanin dafka. Why this serpent had to come onto the floor in Paris Palace? Why not anything else? Why couldn't it become a monkey? Or a Palestinian scorpion? Why does it have to be a sanin? Next kasha. So then, and they also made their sticks into snakes. And the Medrash says that Pirate called in all the little kids in the whole Mitzrayim. The, he called in all the Gans in the Mitzrayim, the four or five years old, and said, Hey, can you do this trick? They said, Of course. We learned this in Kishav 101. You take your snake, you say abracadabra, and you throw it on the floor, it becomes a snake. They all know how to do it. They're all laughing at Moshe and Aaron. But then what happened next is fascinating. Then Rashi says, so then the Pazik says, Vayivla mati Aaron es matoisam. Aaron's stick swallowed up their sticks. What does that mean? They were all snakes. So Rashi says, Gemara and Shabbos, that all the snakes became sticks again. And then Paro, uh, Aaron's stick swallowed up all their sticks. So again, he took his stick, he threw it on the floor, it became a serpent. All of them took their sticks, threw it on the floor, they also became snakes. Then they all were chayzer, became sticks again. And his stick swallowed all of their sticks. And then the measure says, unbelievable thing. After Aaron's stick swallowed all of their sticks, there was no difference in the size of his stick. It was still the same size stick. Just like in the dreams that Yosef interpreted in the jail, that the skinny cows swallowed the fat cows and they still stay skinny, so too here. The sticks swallowed the other sticks and they still stay skinny. So what's the whole shot? What's the whole message here? Why did it have to be that it was a serpent, and why they have to swallow their sticks? So that's what we have to understand. So, the part over here is that the Kliyakar says like this. The Kliyakar says that we know that the Pasuk in Yecheskel, 
Hatanim Hagadol Harayv to Pesach Yairav. Para, we all know when we learned in elementary school, Para thought he was the guy, right? He thought he was the guy. He said, "I made the Yar Li Yar. I made the 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 Nile River. I am the God." He never went to the bathroom. We all know in the coloring books. He went to the, the Nile River and Moshe Rabbeinu busted him over there going to the bathroom. We all know the story. But we don't know, I, I didn't know, that Pare called himself a tannin. He called himself a serpent. That's what he said. He said, I am the biggest serpent in the whole world. I don't have a compliment that is called himself a sea monster. But that's what he said. Imagine his tongue would like split in the ends. I don't know. Maybe. He said, I am the biggest serpent in the whole world and I created the Nile River, and I created everything in the whole world, and they worshipped him. This was the folklore in Mitzrayim, that they worshipped the Yar, and they worshipped all the serpents in it, and all the fish, and they worshipped Pyro, because he was the biggest fish, he was the head honcho, and he made all of them. He was the big fish. So the message here was, it wasn't just Thomas Snake, it was the sign that showed Pyro, you think you are a serpent, you think you're in charge of here. I'm going to show you, Hashem says, I'm going to show you that I'm in charge. You're nothing. You are nothing. So why did I have to switch from the snakes back into the sticks? Because, Pasha, that they could do the same thing with Kishav. And also, like Mufarshim explained, that, that to make one snake swallow another snake, okay, big deal, that's al Pidarakateva. But to make a stick swallow a stick, that is impossible. It is impossible for a stick to swallow another stick. Sticks don't swallow, and they don't swallow sticks. So, now this comes back, this will help us understand what the difference between Kel Shakai and Eli Kim and Yud Kivavke. The Mepharshim say that, Kel, that Eli Kim is the Mida of a Koyach in this world. We know there are a lot of different Koyaches, there's the Mazalas, and like the Avoyed of Adizar say there's a lot of different Koyaches in the world. Everybody has their own power. We worship the sun, we worship the Ramban goes through it, we worship the stars. That's Elikim. Elikim refers to a Koyach. It doesn't refer to the Abishter specifically. It refers to a Koyach in this world. The Goyim also called Elikim in certain places. But Yud Kivavke refers to the Makar Hakol. Yud Kivavke refers to Takif Baal Hakoyachas. Baal Hakoyachas Kulam. He is the Makar for all the Koyachas. He is the Makar for all the Elikims. And that is what Hashem was trying to tell Moshe. I heard this part from Rav in Cleveland that up until now, all the Nisim which were done for Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov were Afi Derech Ateva in a certain way. Avram went into Nimrod, threw Avram into the fire, and he didn't get burned. But we know that the Gemara says the Salamandra, if you take it and it goes into the fire for a certain amount of years, it doesn't get burned. And we, now that we have fireproof material, we have Teflon, you have Kevlar, you have different types of materials which you can wear a glove and you can put your hand in the fire, nothing's going to happen to you. You can keep it there, it won't get burnt. Firefighters can go into a fire, nothing will happen to them. Sure, the Israeli military has some good device in their tank. Fireproof. So the fact that Avram Vida went into the fire and didn't get burnt is not necessarily a Shino Yibadar Teva. You can say that Hashem took a Teva in the world and gave it to Avram. But it's not necessarily something which is up. The Mal Yibadar Teva. But, and the same thing with all the Nisim. But however, now that Hashem is going to show you, Hashem is going to send, send a message to Pyre, and now what's going to happen is going to show you, you might think you have a Kayach, but I am the Kayach which is above all Kayachs. I am like a stick swallowing your sticks. A stick can't swallow sticks. There's no understanding for that. A stick cannot swallow a stick. And that is Yurkei Vavke. The Yurkei Vavke is that Hashem is in charge of everything. You might subscribe Kayachs to other things, but Hashem is in charge of everything. Now that is what Hashem is trying to show Paroi, you think you're a serpent. Now what is the message for us in our daily life? The many times you go through life and people have what we call phobias. They have fears. It happens to be fear of snakes is probably one of the biggest phobias, right? Maybe fear of heights, fear of spiders. A phobia is something this guy is terrified of something, right? They even have a type of medicine out there, they think it's a medicine that for people who fly in airplanes, why? Because they're scared if they fly in an airplane in a confined environment for 16 hours, they can get sick. So taking these medicines can prevent you from all the airplane sicknesses. So that's just a small example. People have phobias of things. People are terrified. There are people who don't fly. You know that? There are people in the world who do not fly in airplanes. They don't fly. I actually heard a certain a big Hashem uh, person. He said he went to the Dari Tisrael and the plane dropped like 35 feet in the air. That's it. He never flew again. He's like, I'm not risking my life. 
So there are people like that. Well, oh, but you see that airplane travel is safer than automobile travel according to the U.S. Transportation Authority. Doesn't matter, it's a phobia, they're scared of things. We walk through the streets, we are scared of things. People are scared of their friends. People are scared of other people around them. People are, people, they think they have enemies. They think there are people out to get them and they're scared of those people. People are scared of their abayim. Nah, this is Sheila. People are scared of a lot of things. And the message we have to take in that nobody has a kayak to hurt you at all. There's no such thing as a kayak to hurt you. Nothing. Nobody can hurt you. I want to read to you a, chai, a piece of the Nefesh Chaim, which we all know, and which we've all heard a thousand times. Of course, as we know, like the Ramchal says in Akdam Tzishon, that things that are Pasha, I'm not here to tell you Pasha the things, but the things that are the most Pasha, we forget about the most. So we have to be reminded of these things again and again. So I once came to a Victor Miller, uh, no, a Victor Miller met a guy in the street, and this guy, he knew he used to come to this shirim, and the guy stopped. He said, where are you? I used to come to my shirim. Why'd you stop? So the guy told the Victor Miller, I already get your, your, I already know your mouth. It's okay. Don't worry. I got your mouth. I got it. The Victor Miller afterwards said, that guy's a shaita. He's the only one who doesn't get the mouth. Because the things that you, the, these are these sayings you have to repeat again and again and again and again. You can't stop. And this is what the Nefesh Chaim writes. Shar Gimel Perkebez. The MS to Indian Gadol Sugul and Ifla. It's a very, very big topic and a great, powerful, unbelievable Sugula. Lahaser Ulavatel may Olaf call Dinin Uritsain Sakharim to remove and to eliminate. What does Levatel mean? Levatel mean when we do Bitl Khamits, right before Pesach, so you have a piece of bread here and you say Kol Khamira in Ravatl, that's it. It's not bread anymore. This does not exist. This is not bread. This is dirt. Legally, halakhically, everything is not bread. So Levatl may Olaf, you Mirvatl from you any retainers that you have. Call Dinin Mirtain Sakharim, any Dinin and Ritsainis. Shallah Yuchlu Lishlai Boy. They have no control over you. The Arab guy is holding his AK 47. There's no, he, he can't press it. He cannot press it. Shallah Yuchlu Lishlai Boy. Vla Yasu Shum Raishim Klaal. They cannot make any impact on you. Zero. Shallah Adam Kaveya Bliboy. Kaveya doesn't mean you think about it once during your smooths and then like forget about it the rest of your life. Kaveya means something that becomes part of your nature. When you're walking down the street, this becomes part of your blood. Lamar Halay Hashem Hu Halikimamiti Hashem is the real Hashem. The Ain Oin Mulvata is Borah Shum Koyak Boilam. There's no other power in the world except for the Abishter. Vakol Mole, Rakah Dusoi, Hapashut, Isbarak Shemoy. Everything is full of just his unity. The simple Pashut one. Mulvata, Bliboy, Bitl Gamor. He erases any doubts, any sphinkers, any fears he has from his heart. A real bitful. Not like I heard once that somebody called up a big Shashiva after the Powerball in America. Recently, the big Powerball. They have 30 million, I don't know how much, 100 million, 300 million. They said, What are you, Rebbe? I had so much Patakan that I was going to win. How come I didn't win? You always tell me that if we have real Patakan or something, we're going to win it. Like the story of Michelle Salanter that the gold watch came in. He said, You didn't call me beforehand and donate $10,000 to the Shiva. You didn't don't say, I'm going to sponsor the next Sefer Torah. You said, if I win, I'll give you 50 bucks. You didn't really have a belief you're going to win it. That's not called Kaveya Beliboy. Kaveya Beliboy means you have to really believe it. The Kaveya Beliboy, the Eina Mashkiach Klal. You're not worried about anything. Mashabid, Medabik, Perimach Shabta, Yerak, Oden, Yitzvarach. Kain, Yasbuk, Yitzvarach, Biyadish, Shema. Everything is going to go, everything is going to disappear. Everything. You have to realize that this is sorry, the Eina Mavada, nothing else exists. Nothing in the whole world. Nobody can hurt you. And this happens all the time. We walk through, let's say the old city, for example. We walk through the old city, and it's very, very narrow, crooked, twisty, winding, nothing straight. You walk around the bend, and you think, you're like, your heart pounding so hard. You feel like somebody's doing vidu here, you're like Arabian Kipper. And you think, who knows who's around the corner? Some sniper, some guy with a knife. Who knows what's going to happen? I don't know, some 13-year-old girl with a scissors. Right? That's one, that once happened by, by the shook. Who knows? And you're terrified. We have to realize there's no path that can hurt me, nothing. Just the Kaddish Baruch Hu, just the Eivishter. I'll give you a little example of this. I was once in a, in a car driving in New York City, Manhattan. And this car uh, had a faulty tail light. The light was out. So of course, that's, the cops always pull over the car that's lights out. Because they give you a ticket for that. The driver of the car didn't have a license. 
And it, was, it also was a very old car. Like a Yeshivish uh, Crown Vic, you know, like a 1980, uh, I don't know, old Chevrolet car. Drive, and what happened was the driver was driving on the, on the BQ, uh, the Manhattan, on the North Side Highway, coming from Muncie, going to Brooklyn, just to get off the Brooklyn Bridge. And he made the wrong turn, he forgot, so he gets off the Lower Manhattan, he's driving through the streets over there. I don't know if you've ever been to Lower Manhattan. It's a very, like, shady, like, <laughs> area, you know. So the cop sees him, pulls him over, sure enough. So he says to the guy, uh, license registration. So he, like, you know, he had a permit, he's like, I don't have a license. I'm uh, sorry, just have to whatever. <laughs> he's like, wait here. So the cop, you know, so all of a sudden, a minute later, another cop car comes, lights and sirens, and phew, like, you know, it's like a drug bust or something. So the driver's thinking, ain, I'm a valley, ain, I'm a There's nothing happening, they can't hurt me, nothing happened. Sitting and saying to Helen. A few minutes later, the cop comes to the door, he says, here, where do you live? The guy's like, Brooklyn. He's like, go back home, don't drive anymore. Shoo, guy goes back home. So that is, uh, that's one thing we have to realize. And there's another famous story which we said here, where Shiva said over the Biskarov, everybody knows he was escaping Nazi Germany, and he was on the, tr- I heard different versions of the story, I can't pin down exactly which is the correct version, he was on a train, he was in a wagon. The most recent version I heard is on a train, and he told his sons to say, in a and a Nazi, it was full of soldiers, full of Nazi soldiers, they came up to him, his son, they grabbed his watch over him, he pulled out a wristwatch, this is the newest version of the story I heard. They pulled away his wristwatch, they said, give me that watch! So his father's like, hot kavona, he's like, had more kavona, you forgot to have kavona, you looked at the time. So he has mechazi, the kavona, ain't a mavadai, the guy gave him the watch back, and that's it, he made it through. And supposedly the briskarov helped, used to show people this watch, this was part of the maisa. But now, we all have to realize this, and one more, the Ramban says, say Parshish Boy, we also know this, also move for some, again, there's no tradition over here. Min anisim agdailma for samim adam boyda benisim anistarim. The big nisim that we see, we, we admit that everything's a nis. And if the person has to realize, she'ein l'adam chelek b'toyres moishe rabbeinu. A person has no portion in the Torah. Zero. He can take it all off. There's nothing there. Nothing inside. It's all to putting in jelly beans. Until you trust and believe in every single thing that happens to you. Every single thing in the world is an ace. A guy here told me it's very unfortunate. He had a lot of money in his cupboard and his jacket and it all disappeared. Khashoggi was nobody here that took it. Must have been some guy off the street. You have to realize that there's no such thing as Teva. Every single thing is an ace. Ain but teva and hagish shalom. No such thing as teva. Bein be rabbin, bein be yachid. Every single thing is an ace. There's no such thing. I know somebody, a young couple who, a few years after the marriage, all their jewelry got lost. Everything, the diamonds and the rings and the bracelets. Never. Never more than one. Thousand dollars down the drain. To realize there's no such thing as teva. You can start calling up the stores. This and that. But also the 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 of others writes. That it's all totally in how much betachin you have. If you have betachin a certain thing, so that thing can hurt you. If you don't have betachin, it can hurt you. So now I'm going to tell you over an unbelievable story which I heard from a broad in Cleveland. New story, fresh off the press. Never said it here before. A guy gives him a call, Arab Shabbos, a few hours before Shkia. He says, my mother is dying. Please go to the hospital and do what the rabbis do in the hospital, you know. Obviously she wasn't so religious, this lady. He gets to the hospital, and he gets up to the room, he sees a few people in white coats outside, he sees a lady, he's like, is this the lady over here, I'm supposed to, They're like, yes. He says to them, who are you guys? They say, oh, I'm a neurologist, I'm a cardiologist, I'm a nephrologist, I'm an orthodologist. He says to them, what's the prognosis? There's, she has an hour left, there's nothing to her. there's no hope for her, an hour left. So he goes into the room, she's laying there on the bed, arms next to her. And every time he used to see her, he, he knew this who this woman was in the community. She always had like an oxygen tank strapped to her. She always had some sort of device. Now there was nothing connected to her. No pipes, no wires, no tubes, no machines, no computers, which go bloop, bloop, bloop every 10 minutes. Nothing. And she's sitting there and they said she's been in and out of a coma the past few days. She sits there, he pulls out the pillow and starts diving a little bit. So he starts diving, and he clears his throat. She opens her eyes. So he says to her, Mrs. So-and-so, you know, you've been sleeping a lot recently. 
if she sees her eyes, there's nothing there. Like, lay line, you know, dead eyes. She says, I'm going to say Shema with you now. So he takes out the sitter and he starts saying Shema. And he added in, I read Moichel, you know, at the end of Shema, he says, Om Yishev, and the Vidna, see. He added in, like, a shtick of Vidu a little bit. So then he tells her, you know, let's make a deal. He saw she was up. She looks at him and she mouths the words. With who? He says, not with me. With the Kaddish Baruch let's make a deal. So she mouths, she doesn't make any sound. She mouths again. She, the, she was a gracious, the, the taller she was. All the simonim that people say somebody's about to die, she had him. She says, what? So he says, I want you to be Mikabel and to be Meshavi, your Ritzayinus, to the Ratzin Hashem. So again, she says, what? She mouths the words, what? He says, I want you to accept the whole, you with all your heart, the rats and Hashem, the details will come later. But I want you to accept everything Hashem says. So she nods. And then she falls back asleep. Casey's sitting there a little while. A nurse comes in, and uh, it was almost time for Shabbos. So she saw that he was there with a beard and everything, a hat and jacket, so she realized that she must have some relations with real people. So she says to Rabbi Brock, this lady's orthodox. So he says, yeah, sure. She's like, how orthodox? He said, what do you mean? What's the difference how orthodox she is? She says, well, there's different levels of orthodoxy in the hospital. Some people can't hear toilet paper in Shabbos. Some people have to eat kosher food. Some people would give them the Shabbos box. He's like, the Shabbos box? What's that? She's like, Ugh. he's like, bring me the Shabbos box. Finally, she comes back a few minutes later, and she calls him over like this. Goes over to the side, outside of the corridor. She says, you don't need this Shabbos box. This, she only has like a few minutes left to live. There's no point to this. He's like, just don't worry about it. Excuse me anyway. Okay, fine. She pulls it out. There was maybe like Leichter inside, two candles and two rolls. Okay, he puts it there. He, he, it's almost time for Shabbos. He flies home. He gets home. He made home just time for a minute. He tells his daughter, go run to the hospital. Bring them some... Soup, bring her some soup, some salmon, some chickens, some challah, some grape juice. Bring it over there. Okay, fine. She brings it in. He comes back. Okay, later, a few hours later, he gets back home from shul. He, he comes to his Shabbos suit that they're sitting down. She says to his daughter, Snoo, what happened in the, in the hospital? So she, the daughter says, Well, I bring her the food. And she, she sits up in bed and she looks at the food. She's like, Mmm, this is, looks good. What is this? So I start to tell her the salmon and the soup and the chicken. And she's like, oh, wow, thank you so much. <laughs> her mom says to her, I think you got the wrong room. <laughs> this lady was dead. She's in a coma. She's like, no, 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 I had the right room. <laughs> Three days later, they released her from the hospital. Three days later, she got out of the hospital. She was alive and healthy, fully functioning. Everything was okay. She lasted, okay, like a week later. She decided she's not keeping the deal anymore. Whatever the details were, she said, that's it, I have enough of this deal. I'm not listening to Hashem anymore. Three hours later, she had a heart attack and they had to send her to the hospital right away. Attached her to all sorts of machines. This and that. Dude, she was in the ICU for a few weeks. At the end of the whole thing, she realized that she made a mistake and she decided she's going to keep the deal again. And they let her out of the hospital and she lived for four more years. Okay, you can't make this story up. Four more years as a healthy woman. And if ever she would tell her bro, if you ever have anybody with any doubts about Hashem, any sh- anything, just send them to me. I'll speak to them. Four more years she lived. And we have to realize that this is the for the whole life. One more thing, I said I'm going to end on time. One more thing, and, and we'll end like this. The Chaim Shalom says a beautiful part. It says in the end of the uh, end of uh, Bracious, so Yaakov Vinu comes to Pare, and by Yigash, and Pare says to, to Yaakov Vinu, how many years of your life? So Yaakov says, it, it was, I, had, I lived and they were bad and they were long and, and when he got punished that he, had to, he died 33 years earlier. That's what Canaan says. The reason is that the Mephardim say there are 33 years, 33 words in these Pesukim. So Mephardim asks, I don't understand, the first eight words of the Pesukim, who is speaking? Pari. The first eight words. Vayoymer Pari al Yaakov. How many years did you live? 
Why does Yaakov Avinu get punished for those words in the Pasuk? Again, there were 33 words in this parasha. Eight of those words is Yaakov talking to Parah. Uh, Parah talking to Yaakov. So why does Yaakov get punished for that? So Chaim Shalom says an unbelievable word. That Yaakov, Parah, why did Parah ask Yaakov, how was your life? Because obviously Yaakov looked stressed, and he looked strained, and he looked bizarre, and he looked down, and he looked out. So that's why Parah asked him, what type of life do you have? So he got punished for the fact that he didn't look happy. He didn't look like life was good for him. So we have seen from your own lesson that we have to believe that Hashem is in charge of everything. And not only that, even if something has shown bad happens to us, we have to be happy about it. I know somebody, whenever you ask them, oh, how's life? Oh, amazing. Unbelievable. Baruch Hashem. Oh, can life be that easy? No, of course the person in the Sears and has struggles and challenges. But life is amazing. Life is beautiful. Life is Baruch Hashem. Why? Because I you know Hashem is in charge. Everything that happens to you is only from Hashem. There's no reason to ever be sad. No reason at all. I heard a Bart from maybe the original Rebbe, I said, there's two things in the world that you have to come to Hashem for. Things that you could fix and things you can't fix. No, sorry, two things in the world that it's us to be sad about. Things you could fix and things you can't fix. Something you could fix, so go fix it. What are you sad about? Right? You, the guy breaks something, the guy loses something, the guy, something that's in your abilities. So go fix it. What are you worried about? What are you sad about? And if you can't fix it, you shouldn't be sad about it. If you can't fix it, it's all from Hashem. So what are we walking around sad and, sad and down and depressed and worried? Oh, this happened to me today. Oh, my Chavuza said this to me today. My roommate stole this from me today. My Rebbe said this to me today. Oh, oh it's terrible. It's all from Hashem. And Shum, Koyach, Barlam, there's no other Koyachis in the whole belt. There's all the Abish there. We should be dancing. We should be, right? We don't have to go dance in the streets. We're walking inside, we should be dancing. Inside. Inside, we should be dancing. I once heard one more thing and that's it. I heard from an of Victor Miller. He told me, I, I, used to, I used to be with him in the summer in a bungalow colony. He's a nice guy. A guy. And he, I said, tell me something that Yazid used to say. Something that's not in the books. So he told me that Victor Miller always used to say, there's only two things in the world you should cry about. The only two things are, two things in the world you should get excited about. Get excited about crying out to Hashem and get excited about praising Hashem. Nothing else. You don't get excited. You lose a thousand dollars, don't get excited. You gain a thousand dollars, you don't get excited. Everything's an ace. Everything's a Kaddish Baruch Hu. Everything's a Novada. There's nothing else in the world. And with this, we'll become better people, have happy lives, we'll strengthen the moon and talk Hashem. Bring the gula of every homage.